In this video, we will look at overloading methods in C Sharp. When a, a method is considered overloaded when the same method name is used more than one time. So there are some rules we need to follow when reusing a method name. So a method name can be reused as long as the associated input parameters are different for each method. And what that means is uh, two methods with the same name can have the same number of input parameters but the data types have changed or it can, they can have different numbers of input parameters. But there has to be a ch some difference in the input parameter um, set between methods with the same name. A method can be overloaded as many times as required as long as these above rules are followed. Let's look at some good and bad examples of overloaded methods. So he, these first three methods are examples of correct method overloading. So here I have a method named getMax, and I've, I've, I've declared the same method name three times. In the first uh, instance, my getMax is defined to take two integer input param or two integer values in and returns an integer value out. So this get max might return the highest of the two integer values. Then I have a second definition for get max which d has two double input parameters and returns a double. Because these two input parameters are different types than the first definition, then this is a correct method overloading. What happens is when you call the get max method, if the if the method that is calling get max inserts two integer values during the call, then the compiler knows to use the integer version. And if the if the uh, whoever is calling get max method passes in two double values, the compiler knows to use the get max method that has the two doubles. Here in our third example, we have the get max method defined with three double input parameters, and it also returns a double. So if the user were to, to call get max and pass in two double values, then the compiler knows to call this first get max. And if the user tried to pass in three double values, the compiler knows to call the second get max or the third get max in the set. So depending on the input parameter um, pattern, the compiler knows which of these three get max methods to call. All right, in this second example, um, I, or the, the second set of three, these are all incorrect ways to try to overload a method. So here I have the get max method defined with that takes two integer values in. And then I have another get max method that, that I'm trying to define. And it also takes two integer parameters in, but the integer parameters have a different name. Now the names, the compiler does not care about what you name your variables. What it says is that if I were to try to define two get max methods, and they both took a pair of integer parameters, the comp compiler would have no idea on whether to call the first get max method or the second, because they both look the same. In our next get max down here, I've also included two integer parameters, but I changed the return type. So for example, I may be implying that I have one method where I pass in two integer values and I return an int, and another method where I pass in two integer values and I return a double. Well, again, because the input parameters are the same, the compiler does not know whether, whether to call the first get ma max method or the third get max method. So you have to change the input parameters, not the return type, to do true method overloading. All right, let's look at a quick example. So here I'm going to create a method named add values that takes two integer values as inputs and returns the result. So this method might look something like this. It will be a static method. It returns an integer that represents the sum of the two integers that are passed into it. And I will call this method add values. And then I need to create two integer parameters. So int x, int y should work. And what I will do is I'm going to say return the sum of x plus y. So when we call this method, I will pass two ints in return their sum. In main, when we call this, maybe I would say add values. And we would pass in two values. How about 10 and 13? Now the add values method returns an integer value. 
So if I want to save that result in main, I would I need an integer value variable to hold the result. So I, I will create an integer variable here, hold the result that is returned from that method, and let's print it. Console.writeLine, I will say first result is, and pass in my result. We can run this just to make sure it works. The resulting value should be 23, and it is. I passed the 10 into integer value x, 13 into, into integer variable y, 10 plus 13 is 23. We return the value 23 and it is stored into the variable result and we, we are good to go. Now let's do this exact same method again, but I want it to work with double values as well. So let's change this to work with the doubles. Well, we can do this. I'm going to create a static method. This time the method is going to return a double, but I'm going to use the same method name. Now let's try declaring an int x int y input parameter for a moment. And I will say return x plus y. Now I have a different return type, but I have an error here. It says the type program already defined a, a member called add values with the same parameter types. So the compiler is telling us, hey, you already have an add values with these two that takes two ints. But if I even change one of these input parameters to double, we are in good shape. Okay, as long as there is the input parameter sets are unique, you can keep reusing the same method, the same method name. I'm going to make both of them double in this case. All right, so now I'm, I, I'm expecting a double value x, a double value y to be passed in. I'm returning the double sum. Let's see this. Now I'm going to say add values here. I want to call the add values method. Now in Visual Studio, I'm going to notice I have this one of two syntax here. The one of two syntax is telling me that, hey, this method is overloaded. It has a couple definitions. So the one is highlighted that takes a double in, two doubles in, returns a double. But if I click down here, I see my other add values method definition that takes an int, two ints in, returns an int. So if I were to try to start typing integer values into this add values method, it's going to try to pair it up with the correct method header. So since I passed an integer 10 in, it's expecting another integer to be passed in. But if I were to pass 10.1 into this method, then what happens is this method is, well, I guess we have to let IntelliSense kind of do its thing. We'll say 13.3. All right, now it recognizes that we are calling the double version. And again, when I hover over this, you can see that out to the side of the definition, there's a plus one overload syntax, right? Whoop, disappeared. Okay, if my add values method that takes two doubles in is we're gonna return a double value out, so I'm going to create a variable. I will name this one result two and save the result and print it to the, the console, console.writeLine second result is sorry about the typos here result 2 we'll run it and it worked it returned a double value this time so add values i've used the same method name but depending on the input parameters i pass in the result resulting implementation is different. Let's do one more. Let's say we want to do the same work with strings. Adds two strings and returns the result. Well, when you add string values, you concatenate them. You stick them together. So I'm going to say static. We are returning a string this time. I'm going to use the add values name again. This time I will say string x, string y. And the implementation will be the same. Return x plus y. In this case, we are concatenating strings. And we'll call this up here. String result 3 is equal to add values. And now we see that we have one of three overloads on this add values method. One that takes doubles, 
one that takes ints, and one that takes strings. So let's add the values hi and ho. And we will print the result, console.writeline. Third result is result three. And then run it, and we see the third one took our two input values in, concatenated them together. So th the same method name was with three implementations using o method overloading. Now, just to, just as a last thing, I will show you before I leave. Uh, we'll say console dot right line. Notice that the right line method has one of nineteen. The right line method has nineteen definitions. It's been overloaded nineteen times. And if I click down this list, we can see we have a a right line method that takes no input parameters one that takes a boolean, a char data type, a ch character array, a decimal, double, float, int, long, etc., a generic object, a string, an unsigned int, unsigned long, a, a formatted string and an object array. This is the this is the method overload we use when we do formatting like uh, my name is well no, right well right above here. I don't even have to do another one. Here is my formatted string and the object array or, or or the object allows me to insert a value into the formatted string and then this next va this next um, example shows you how you can have multiple values passed into a formatted string anyway just wanted to show you overloading in c sharp